hi good evening one and all and uh, i want your presence so that we can start the discussion on exodontia and impaction okay so i'll be waiting for one to two minutes so that uh, i want the crowd to be active so please do drop me a thumbs up sign yes good evening good evening one and all so people are active so we'll try to finish this uh, as fast as possible by learning some important things so please do make a note uh, i want your presence uh, with a proper thumbs up sign so that we can uh, proceed deep into the discussion uh, I, i want a confirmation from your side whether the voice is clear the picture is clear picture and voice should be clear is it clear voice and picture and everything are clear so that we can start the class yeah okay <clears throat> so today's topic is exodontia and impaction and i hope most of you are very good at this because this is a, one of the important area in dentistry and one of the most common area for your questions in the final year as well as for your practical in the final year so it is mandatory that most of you are good at exodontia a bit balanced at the impaction okay then so before going into this topic yesterday we have discussed few things right diagram based things we have covered so i'm just going to recap few things okay if you see this this knife is okay we have learned this knife is okay number 11 okay the blade is number 11 blade okay regularly number 11 blade has a pointed tip you can see that it has a pointed tip okay one so pointed tips are regularly used to give stab incision and abscess okay so stab incision is an incision which is given to treat abscesses so the leven is a pointed tip which is used for for a stab incisions for treating abscess cases okay the second important thing is most commonly used blade in your oral surgery is a most commonly asked question okay the answer is number 15 blade number 15 blade is most commonly used in oral surgery department okay clear the most commonly used blade is number 15 the next goes okay this is an area which has covered in 2017 neat the angulation of different types of injections okay so you know that uh, uh, the muscular im okay im is used im is 90 degrees means it is given perpendicular to the surface whereas subcutaneous because the target area is the subcutaneous tissue here the angulation is 45 intravenous is above the subcutaneous the angle is 25 degrees whereas interdermal is very superficial you have to give so it should be with the less angle so they can ask you the angles in specific because in 2017 the question was the angle of insertion of injection in intramuscular is answer is very simple the 90 answer okay they can ask a sequence based question in your mc in your aims you have a sequence based question arrange the things in ascending order arrange the things in descending order right so they can ask you these angles okay these angles are very very important because they depends upon the anatomy dermis uh the answer is 10 to 15 intradermal intravenous is 25 degrees subcutaneous is 45 and intramuscular is 90 i hope you are very clear this area is covered so you need to make a note so once you are done with this <clears throat> the parts of metallic syringe okay which are uh, a part of your local anesthesia that we are going to discuss <laughs> further so these are the parts of metallic syringe they can ask you arrange the parts of metallic syringe in the order 
from the tip to toe they can ask some questions because this question was asked in 2017 neat exam okay so they can ask you to arrange the parts in the order <coughs> similarly okay this question was again asked in 2017 okay identify this tissue forceps this is Allen's tissue forceps I hope this is already covered in the diagram based uh, questions of a video lecture okay so make a note this is Allen's tissue forceps okay Babcock tissue forceps this is other tissue forceps make a note so please they, they'll simply give the diagram they will ask you to identify the particular <coughs> forceps the questions are very very simple and plain identify this instrument okay <coughs> and tubes are again a most commonly asked questions uh, in your general surgery okay so there are different types of tubes which are used uh, from the head to the toe in different different areas okay once you're done with this particular video you'll have an exam on which in the in the particular exam we have asked two tubes so learn all the tubes anyway uh, when we are dealing with general surgery I'll add few more tubes this is endotracheal tube okay so this is for now so some diagram based stuff is covered so before going into exodontia so basics about exodontia I'm not going to stress much okay first important thing that you have to focus on exodontia is the indications and contraindications particularly most of your questions will move around contraindications again in those contraindications the contraindications are divided into two types they are absolute contraindications and relative cons contraindications so they're just going to give a description of a patient who has entered the department okay this particular patient has this these features by telling the systemic condition of the patient or by giving a hint about the systemic condition of the patient and they are going to ask you whether you're going to proceed with extraction or not Th these are the very simple <coughs> logical uh, questionings uh, that we encounter okay <coughs> so please try to be uh, perfect in analyzing the systemic condition and just make a note about the absolute contraindications and the relative contraindications so that they can ask question on that particular area okay I hope you're done right absolute contraindications related to contraindications is a most commonly asked area so next one is when you're planning a full mouth extraction okay this is the sequence of extraction that you have to follow first of all you have to go for maxillary teeth the reason why you have to go for the maxillary extraction first is because if the mandibular sockets are open and if you are extracting the mandible maxillary teeth there is a chance that the the uh, that the, that uh, any sort of teeth fragments or any sort of teeth debris may fall in the sockets of mandible so that's the reason maxillary teeth are extracted first when compared to the mandibular teeth and the second reason why maxillary teeth are extracted first is you know that the maxillary bone you know that the maxillary bone the maxillary maxillary bone is porous okay so it is porous you have more more amount of cancellous bone in the maxillary teeth okay so whenever you have more cancellous bone when an LA is given maxillary teeth or the maxilla will have will get anesthetized faster and that is the reason why it's better to go and extract the teeth of maxilla so these are the two reasons one is extracted sockets of the mandible may get contaminated second one is maxillary anesthesia acts faster when compared to that of the mandible so this is the sequence that you have to make a note the first teeth to be extracted is the posterior most teeth except the posterior most teeth has to be extracted first followed by the last teeth that is that to be extracted in the maxillary arches maxillary canine and the last teeth that to be extracted in the mandibular arches mandibular canine okay the first teeth is the posterior most teeth and the last teeth is the canine should be extracted so this order you have to make a note so I'm done with this if you are fine please do drop me a thumbs up sign that I can proceed further try to be active so that uh, we can finish the things as fast as possible
okay next important is i'm going to post this pic on your whatsapp groups uh, the main reason of adding this particular pic is i have seen questions uh, on this area okay local causes of impaction or uninterrupted teeth i hope you know these these can be the these can be the local causes but systemic causes are the areas of question you can see i have seen questions like rickets uh, your congenital syphilis your uh, hormone related there are many hormone related diseases there are many hereditary related diseases down syndrome is there huller syndrome is there cleft lip and all these cases you will have retained uh, deciduous or retained uh, permanent teeth so means that that's a sort of impaction right so anyway we are going to learn about each aspect in detail in the particular uh, disease when you are dealing with this uh, uh, pedo or when you are dealing with this oral path and oral medicine but make a note so a question can ask you like a particular child with these uh, uh, symptom signs some some symptoms related to the cleft or some symptoms related to the down syndrome they can ask and they can ask q what is the probability of uh, teeth or anything like they can ask some systemic related question so just uh, try to make a note of this particular table uh, which they can <coughs> ask question so next is uh, when you're talking about the difficulty index which is a most commonly asked question the first aspect that you have to focus is uh, the angulation uh, anyway we, we know that there are meso angular disto angular <coughs> vertical many different types of impactions that's easy classification but once you are done with the type of infection type of impaction the second important aspect that you have to focus is the depth so depth is just a comparison of the third molar with the second molar means you have to draw an occlusal line over over the second molar and you have to extend it over the third molar and by which you will know the depth of the particular teeth so a a is the height of the tooth is same at the level or above the occlusal level you can see in this particular week both the second molar and third molar are at the same occlusal level and that case you will consider it as a depth whereas in the case of second one that is if you compare the occlusal level of the second and the occlusal level of the third occlusal level of the third is bit lower but is above the cervical line if you see the cervical line it the occlusal level is above means it is below the occlusal level of the second molar and above the cervical level of the second molar so such condition can be categorized as b the third one is the occlusal level of the third molar is below the cervical line of the second molar okay then this condition will be categorized as sc so what is the use of this depth means if you see this line the deeper the impacted teeth the more overlining bone is present and more the angle of impaction deviating from parallel to the long axis and the more difficulty to remove the particular teeth means c is very difficult to remove when compared with b and b is difficult to remove when compared with a clear so that is about the depth you have depth that is a b and c out of which c is difficult next one this is a different classification the classification is the amount of space available okay so the amount of space available classification in which it is divided into class 1 class 2 class 3 and class 3 okay right so if the space available between the anterior ramus of the anterior ascending ramus and the distal surface of the third molar is enough to erupt is enough for eruption then you can consider it as class 1 okay if the space available between the anterior border of the ramus and the distal surface of the molar is less you, here you can see it is very less so the the third molar is not able to erupt that condition can be considered as class 2 if the third molar is entirely embedded in the ramus of the mandible in this condition then you can consider it as class 3 so this is how you have to categorize into class 1 class 2 and class 3 so this is the this is this concept is related to the space that is available okay clear right so we are done with the the class we are done with the space right so before going into the uh, next one that is uh, that is the difficulty index we need to learn about few lines they are called as war lines 
okay you have war lines w line a line r line okay so war lines are very easy so we'll have a proper textbook reading it's very very simple please do make a note don't get confused related to the war lines war lines are the most common area of question so war line in which white line coming to the white line the white line represents the occlusal plane means the line is drawn touching the occlusal surface of the first and second molar and extending posteriorly over the third molar and what it's going to give information it's going to give info information the difference in the occlusal level of the second and third molar you can see war line war line is extending from the first molar to the second molar towards the third molar so by which it is going to give the difference between the occlusal the difference between the occlusal levels of first second to the third molar so this is what the white line says that is the war line and the second one is amber line okay so what amber line represents the amber line represents the bone level okay what is amber line amber line is a line drawn from the crust of the interdental septum between the molars and extend posteriorly to distal third molar and to ascending ramus the main important aspect that you have to focus it it denotes the alveolar bone covering the impacted teeth and the portion that is not covering the impacted teeth it gives the amount of bone that is covering the impacted teeth and that is not covering the impacted teeth so that is about the amber line the last comes is the red line so red line is a perpendicular that is dropped from the amber line where you going to apply the force so it's going to tell how much amount of bone that should be removed before the elevation so amber line gives representation about the bone levels amount of bone covered amount of unbone covered whereas red line is going to give an information about the quantity or the amount of bone that you have to remove before application of elevation and just make a note if the length of this this last line is very important if the length of the red line is more than 5 mm then the extraction is considered as difficult from 5 mm every additional millimeter makes the teeth more difficult how much time three times more difficult in extraction so these are the points that you have to add when we are talking about this particular line okay so i'm done with the war lines so war line what is w means what is a means what is r means or they can simply ask so you you we are talking like red line means is a perpendicular drawn from amber line this is your amber line right amber line is an extension from interdental septa to that of the second and to the ramus we are extending it from here to here from the interdental septa whereas your white line is from the occlusal surface and red line is a perpendicular that is dropped okay you can see a perpendicular that is dropped from the amber line so so they can ask a diagram based question simply on a radiograph or uh, on a on a typical uh, cartoon model like this uh, uh, by drawing different lines and they can ask what is the line represents or they can directly ask white line represents the occlusal surface amber line represents the amount of bone covered and un uncovered whereas the red line represents the amount of bone removed before the application of elevator okay so those are the things which are important and next comes is the difficulty index of the third molar this third molar is mandibular third molar so we are talking about the difficulty index of mandibular third molar right so so uh, as we know that uh, the most easiest type of extraction is the mesoangular okay mesoangular is the most easiest type of extraction so mesoangular will have score 1 whereas your horizontal will have score 2 vertical will have score 3 and distal angular will have score 4 so the most difficult type of impaction in mandibular third molar is distal angular and the most easiest type of impaction in mandibular third molar is mesoangular okay so this is a common thing that to be added and the second most thing is the most common type of impaction okay they can ask you the most common type of impaction so i want you guys to be on live to ask to answer few questions okay so please do answer me uh, 
what is the most common impaction in the oral cavity most common type of impaction in the oral cavity i hope you are online i want to answer in the chat box what is the most common type of impaction in the oral cavity most common type of impaction in the oral cavity yes 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 perfect okay so the most common type of impaction in the oral cavity is mesoangular make a note make a note please see the difference in the question the most common type of impaction in the oral cavity is a mesoangular considering mandibular third molar and the most common type of impaction in the mandible is again mesoangular but the most common type of impaction in the maxilla is transverse okay so transverse is the most common type of impaction in the maxilla mesoangular is the most type common type of impaction in the mandible and overall if they ask generalize what is the most common type of impaction in the uh, oral cavity the answer is mesoangular i hope you are clear right mesoangular in general mesoangular mandibular third molar transverse is the maxillary done yes okay next one next one is most common teeth which get impacted is make a note it is mandibular third molar mandibular third molar is the most common teeth which get impacted and the second one is the most common anterior teeth which get impacted is the canine canine is the most common anterior teeth which get impacted okay I, i'm going to ask one more question for you which is the most difficult type of impaction in the mandibular third molar which is the most difficult type of impaction in the mandibular third molar the most difficult type of impaction in the mandibular third molar is the most dif difficult type of impaction in mandibular third molar is okay so in mandibular third molar the most dif difficult type of impaction is distoangular whereas the most easiest is mesoangular if the same question is asked for the maxillary third molar it is reverse the most difficult type of impaction in the maxillary third molar is mesoangular and the most easiest type of impaction in the maxillary third molar is distoangular i hope you are very clear so if they are not mentioning which whether it's maxilla or mandible then you have to consider it as mandible if they are clearly mentioning maxilla and mandible then see the question and then go for the answer okay so we have discussed the depth previously we have discussed the depth the depth is a b and c and i have already mentioned clearly that c is difficult so a you are going to drop a score 1 b you are going to drop a score 2 and c you are going to drop a score 3 and we have discussed about the classes basing upon the space that is available we are talking about space space that is available which has divided into class 1 class 2 class 3 right class 1 is easy 1 class 2 class 3 so adding these scores if the score is in the range of 7 to 10 then it is very difficult if it is in the range of 5 to 7 it is moderately difficult if it is in the range of 3 to 4 it is minimal difficult so what is the question okay if you see 2018 and 2019 neat question paper there is a question so now i'm going to post the question so please try to identify it and come out with the right answer I, i'll make the question as simple as possible a patient has approached with a pain in uh, related to the mandibular third molar or mandibular posterior zone upon radiographic examination that is iopa okay it is clear that there is a distoangular impaction there is a distoangular impaction which is placed at the depth of b okay distoangular impaction which is placed at a depth of b upon space analysis it was confirmed that it is a class 2 case okay question is distoangular it is level b and it is class 2 so now they are asking what is the difficulty score of this particular impact at it what is the difficulty score of this particular impact at it so distoangular is score 
because you can see it is triangular the score is 4 class B the score is 2 class 2 the score is 2 so it is 8 8 means it is very difficult to extract so they can ask you one more upgraded time taking question so they, they will ask you what is the question which of the following which of the following teeth is easy to extract or they, they can give you uh, recently an unexperienced an unexperienced doctor came into the department as a new staff okay among the four teeth which are available in option a b c and d which option you want to go for this particular doctor as as the as the data says that he is least experienced you will give a minimal difficult index case for him so they are going to give the description whether it is what angulated whether it is at the what level what is the space analysis and you have to calculate everything drop score for all the options a option the score is this b option the score is this c d and you have to select the least score to allot the particular case to the doctor they can ask you which of the following option has the highest value arrange the options in the ascending order and the descending order the difficult index or anything this is the most commonly asked case based difficult index score question which the question was repeated in both 2018 as well as in 2019 okay so right uh, you're clear right so this is a very very important conceptual thing clear i want a thumbs up sign from you so that i'll be proceeding further this is a very very important uh, uh, table that you have to practice n number of times ask your friend to drop a few case based questions followed by you check few case based questions and try to answer them and increase your practice levels i want a thumbs up sign from you so that i'll be proceeding to further slides yes perfect okay so uh, we we have one or two questions related to this in our basic mcq books that is w h a r f e analysis so simply the first question on this particular assessment is they will ask you to expand this abbreviation okay w for winters classification which we have already learned the winter classification right w for winters classification next h for height of the mandible the, the amount of bone or the height of the mandible that is available a for angulation of the third molar a for angulation of the third molar okay r for root shape and root development okay f for follicles and e for e for exit the path of exit no need to go very deep into this assessment form but make a note the full form of w h a r f e okay so that is very very important particular to this classic to this assessment this is a different type of difficulty assessment okay next one uh, when it when uh, a case is coming when a case is coming the basic things what you have to do because this is a radiology related stuff which is again frequently asked in oral surgery point of view also what is the name of this radiograph this radiograph so radiographs are uh, radiographs that are used for this particular case are divided into intraoral and extraoral but mostly we'll go with intraoral things okay uh, when intraoral is not able to diagnose few things uh, which are inside the bone or completely inside the bone then we'll go with extraoral extraoral most commonly we deal with opg and uh, lateral oblique views lateral oblique. these are the most uh, commonly used okay so i got the answer okay so what is this oh uh, yeah 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 perfect perfect very good very good okay so this is people consider this as iopa but according to the norms it is not iopa what is iopa intraoral periapical radiograph right iopa the full form is intraoral periapical right so where is periapical in this there is no periapical in this okay so this radiograph cannot be considered as iopa because there is no periapical reason iopa means mainly focusing on periapical reason whereas in this particular radiograph you can see the periapical reason okay yes okay so that's the first thing why i have added this particular pic so always make a note iopa means there should be a periapical reason okay so intraoral 
periapical radiograph is most commonly used for impacted teeth. The next, you have to make a note like when you want to identify uh, a particular position of a particular teeth, in, in normal IOPA, you can know the in a normal IOPA, you can know the mesiodistal dimensions, MD. You can know the mesiodistal dimensions or mesiodistal position of a particular teeth. Whereas in the case of your, uh, uh, you for in the case of your IOPA, but you will not know about the buccolingual position. So to know about the buccolingual position, you have to use a right angle technique. Right angle technique means exposure at two different angles, 90 degrees to each other. For example, IOPA plus occlusal view are right angle techniques a combination of IOPA plus occlusal because occlusal uh, IOPA view is a different view and occlusal view is a right angle view of IOPA view so by which you can uh, look lo localize the object okay by which you can localize the object okay so they can ask you what is right angle technique right angle technique is a combination of two radiographs which are right angle to each other in the exposure that can be an IOPA and an occlusal radiograph the second method of object to localization is most of you know that is the slob rule okay i hope you remember the slob rule slop same side lingual opposite side buccal slob rule which is also called as buccal shift which is also called as clark's technique because it's given by clark okay so these are the other names object buckle shift clark's technique or slob rule so what happens in slob rule is because we know the mesodistal because you, if you take this particular teeth into consideration you know the mesodistal position of this teeth on iopia but you don't know what is the buccolingual dimension so what you're going to do you're going to shift the position for example this is a straight x-ray in which you can see the point here okay Whereas in the case of an X-ray, what you are doing, you are sh this is the mesial side, okay, right? This is the distal side. So what you have done is you have you have been exposing from the mesial side. You have been exposing from the mesial side, okay? And when you are exposing from the mesial side, the object, this is the mesial side, this is the mesial side and the distal side. If you are exposing from the mesial side, even the object has moved mesial side means it is moving towards the same side then it is on the lingual position for example if the object is moving on this side when you are moving towards the mesial side then it will be considered as opposite side then the object will be on the buccal surface hope you are clear with clark's rule clear the slob and application of slob because slob application can be a good diagram based question in radiology it's a very very good diagram based question in your radiology so i hope you're very clear right slob how to apply slob just move the angulation of the x-ray tube when the object is moving towards the same side where you are moving your x-ray tube then it will be on the lingual side if it is moving towards the opposite side then it will be on the buccal side it's very simple done done i got a message from devika i got a message from suma mahesh hammer you're done guys yes i'm moving towards the next one so apart from slob rule there is a slight modification in the slob rule this technique is basically used uh, in your uh, uh, endodontics it's almost the same uh, basically the technique is used to extra identify the extra canal okay it's not actually a slob rule a slight modification of the slob rule this is called as waltron's technique so you're going to change the angulation by 20 degrees you're going to just change the angulation by 20 degrees to the previous exposure you take exposure change the angulation just by 20 degrees this change of angulation just by 20 degrees and comparing the two x-rays is called as waltron's technique which is used in endodontics to identify the extra canal you can see in this particular pic okay by changing the angulation uh, you got to know that okay there is one more canal or two more canals extra so please do add a note about this wall trans technique in which the angulation is changed by 20 degrees similar to your slob but the basic use of this particular x-ray and change in angulation x-ray is to identify the extra canal and to identify the anatomy 
in endodontics. So next one is uh, the few uh, radiographic appearances. For example, if you see this radiographic appearance, okay, this is, I hope you know, this is dilaceration, right? This is dilaceration, bending of your root. So dilaceration sometimes on radiograph can appear like this. So if they give a ask a question, you can consider this as dilaceration. Okay, this dila dilacerated tooth uh, has some appearance. That appearance is called as target or bull's eye appearance. Sometimes it is also called as scorpion teeth because it has a bend, right? So it is called as scorpion teeth or it is called as bull's eye phenomenon or target bull's eye phenomenon. Okay, so this is a thing that you have to make around because it was asked question in one of the exam recently. So what is this? Okay, so bull's eye on radiograph or, or on IOPA is this. Okay, this is called as bull's eye on IOPA. What is this actually means? This is a lingually impacted mandibular third molar. The lingually impacted mandibular third molar is called as the bull's eye appearance on IOPA. lingually impacted mandibular third molar on IOPA appears like a bullseye clear done yes perfect okay so one bullseye appearance can be your dilacerated teeth that is the anterior dilacerated teeth the second bullseye appearance can be your lingually impacted mandibular third molar so once you are done with this we'll proceed and go ahead with the next few important things okay few techniques okay this question I think was given in 2018 neat if you want you can make a note about the scientist name who is concerned with this lateral definition technique so the type of incision that is used in this is modify s shaped they have used a modified s shaped incision modified a shaped incision this is particularly used to remove the mandibular third molar the question is very simple lateral trephination technique is used for removal of mandibular third molar this question was given in 2019 neat 2019 neat this question was given okay so what is it the type of incision is s shaped modified s shaped incision is the type of incision and this is this is how it is done okay Clear. The next goes is uh, post a stamp technique. Okay, what is this? Post a stamp technique. Post a stamp technique is something like your post stamp. It's something like your post stamp, which is uh, used by the post graduates in the initial stage of their impaction. Okay, so when they're starting their impactions at the initial stage, they use this particular technique. They can ask a diagram based question that is post taste stamp technique okay so post taste stamp technique apart from this there is called as a lingual split technique lingual split technique is a technique uh, that is uh, most commonly used for lingually impacted teeth i'll be posting some uh, the steps and everything uh, in the form of the textbook pick on your group because that has to be done from top to bottom okay lingual split technique which is most commonly useful for lingually impacted teeth and uh, or lingually placed teeth and you have to make a note about the advantages disadvantages and the diagram based question over that so that those are the techniques that you have to focus because your questions will move around this so today's uh, in today's session the last topic that i'm going to discuss is about the dry socket so I want you guys to get ready because dry socket, uh, there are many things that you have to make a note because dry socket question, I feel like it can be more of an, a uh, case based question. 
a patient after extraction this many days under the usage of some tobacco or under the usage of some oral contraceptives or during the menstrual period came to the department complaining all the futures all the clinical futures what is the mode of approach what is the diagnosis such a clinical based lengthy question can be prepared from dry socket right so we'll we'll start with dry socket so dry socket the clinical picture will be like this you can see the clinical picture can be like this okay there are many other synonyms for dry socket uh, it can be called as painful dry socket it can be called as necrotic alveolar socket it can be called as delayed extraction it can be called as localized osteomyelitis it can be called as fibrinolytic osteitis it can be called as it can be termed with many many names which are easy to identify no need to worry about that and coming to the next the important area that you have to focus on is etiology so what is the etiology of dry socket because dry socket uh, is a case that you commonly encounter in your departments when i was there as a final year student or an intern uh, I, in in the posting of one month i have seen minimum of 2 to 3 dry socket cases so i hope most of you has treated the dry socket cases also within your college limitation so it's very easy to understand the first common etiology for dry socket is the traumatic extraction extraction where lots of trauma was done that can be one etiology and the use of oral oral contraceptives okay so oral contraceptives why means the oral contraceptives are going to activate your fibrinolytic system because fibrinolytic system is mainly concerned with the dry socket okay so fibrinolytic system is mainly concerned with the dry socket so these oral contraceptives they are going to activate this uh the mechanism of dry socket and they are going to cause the dry socket the third one is hormonal changes the change in the hormonal levels particularly during the uh, menstrual cycle can also initiate the process of dry socket and of course the most common thing that you may encounter is the use of tobacco smoking can also or inadequate intra operative irrigation when you are not properly irrigated the area where the extraction was done that can be one of the reason and of course the advanced ages Uh, that immune compromised people and all this these are the basic etiologies but most of the times the etiology can be uh, i mean your your case based questions the etiology can be uh, the smoking the etiology can be the smoking uh, or uh, your use of oral contraceptives or the use of hormonal changes all these are the basic uh, etiologies that are given in your case based question uh, i got a message from student that the voice is not clear are you able are, are you not able to hear my voice guys i want a response from your uh, side so that i can proceed to the next one are you able to hear my voice or not i'm waiting for your response if the response is fine then i'll proceed ahead yeah maybe uh, the issue may be uh, your internet signal is uh, a bit weak so that the voice may not be clear yes yes thank you thank you so much yes okay so we have done with the etiology etiology is one is excessive trauma no proper irrigation you have done more trauma no proper irrigation when you are doing extraction the patient have a habit of smoking or usage of tobacco or uh, uh, any foreign body that is being uh, inserted into the socket and your hormones and it can be uh, your oral contraceptives or it can be advanced is any of these can be a basic etiology or a background history from the patient so apart from this uh, the main important thing that you have to focus is uh, recently given i think it's uh, this is the question that is recently given in the 
neat i think so neat or aims this is the recent question that is percentage of teeth affected with dry socket the person answer is 2 percentage in overall cav oral cavity the percentage of incidence of dry socket is 2 percentage and these dry sockets are most commonly seen in the case of your mandibular third molars and the incidence of dry socket in mandibular third molar is 20 percentage so be clear whether they are asking the overall incidence the overall incidence the answer is 2 percentage whereas they are asking the incidence of dry socket in mandibular third molar the answer is 20 percentage clear so there are two two things okay overall incidence is two percentage this is a recently asked question in one of the examination and mandibular third molars the incidence is 20 percentage mandibular third molar is the most common teeth affected with dry socket uh, i mean the indirect reason can be it is the most common teeth which has an impacted teeth right which is the most common impacted teeth has high chances of getting the dry socket so most of your impacted teeth questions will be in the mandibular third molar area so these are the points to be added so once you're done with this uh, i'll be focusing on the clinical features of the dry socket so few clinical features i feel like you have experienced just recap them how the patient patient is coming after three to four days so this three to four days after three to four days or two to three days is again the same common answer for your delayed expansion okay so once you're done with amalgam restoration there is called as delayed expansion the patient comes after three to four days after amalgam restoration with a severe pain or with a broken teeth or with a uh, with a broken teeth or with a cracked teeth the answer is delayed expansion that is your uh, dental materials related question right and here the patient is going to come after two to four days or three to four days uh, with a pain okay so pain is the most common thing that is complained by the patient so once you are done with the pain the second most common thing is halitosis the patient will have uh, the patient will have a severe halitosis means a different taste perception patient will have a severe halitosis a different taste perception and the other features is you cannot appreciate any modifications on the radiograph because this is an acute thing but if there is any foreign body foreign body which is present in the socket can be detected on radiograph if it is like radiograph detector it can be detected on radiograph means radiograph cannot give any sort of information about this but it will eliminate the presence of any foreign body in the particular socket and few times this pain will be a radiating pain radiating to the ear on the same side right so one is it is the complaint should be a pain after three to four days and uh, halitosis is other important future in this particular case and uh, it may radiate to the ear and radiograph has a very less importance to this okay so you will have low grade sometimes you the patient may complain a low grade favor sometimes uh, lymph nodes on that particular side may be uh, palpated that is uh, you can have some lymphadenopathy or something like that okay and uh, uh, can you tell me what are the theories related to the dry socket theories related to dry socket So what are the two theories? Yes, perfect. Okay. So the two theories are one is related to the fibrolytic action. The fibrolytic system is going to act for the clotting mechanism. The one theory says about the clotting and second theory says about the 
bacterial infection okay so there is some bacterial infection that is leading to this and, uh, and do make a note uh, according to the textbook the bacteria that are mainly concerned with this are actinomycosis and streptococcus mutant And one more bacteria that is mainly concerned with the activation or increasing the activity of fibrinolytic system is Trepanomia denticola. Okay, so Trepanomia denticola is mainly concerned with the fibrinolytic activity, whereas the bacterial theory supports that these two bacteria are mainly concerned with they, they support the bacterial theory. Okay, so these are the points to be added. So I hope most of you or your uh, friends or some XYZ or your PGs has done some therapy for this particular condition. What you have done? So just tell me what you have done. So what the treatment we regularly do is, first of all, it's better to take a radiograph and exclude the chances of any foreign body in the socket. Okay, first take a radiograph, exclude the foreign body chances. Or if you are able to see the socket clearly, no need of taking a radiograph. Second one is irrigation. Better irrigate with chlorohexidine and the percentage of chlorohexidine that should be used is 0.12 percentage 0.12 percentage is a percentage of chlorohexidine that is used in the mouthwashes okay 0.12 percentage is a percentage of chlorohexidine used in the mouthwash don't get confused with endodontic irrigation mouth uh, chlorohexidine endodontic irrigation chlorohexidine is two percentage Endochlorohexidine is 2 percentage, whereas mouthwash chlorohexidine is 0.12 percentage, which is used as an irrigation. Yes, perfect. Then, if it is painful, give local anesthesia. If if it is painful, give local anesthesia. And inside this socket, try to keep uh, your zinc oxide isinol paste or antibiotic paste, even you can keep metronidazole, you can keep metronidazole, you can keep antibiotic paste or zinc oxide eugenol paste. You have to irrigate with chlorohexidine 0.12 percentage. If it is paining, give LA. And there is some evidence shown that you can even tropically place PHBA. PHBA is nothing but para hydroxy benzoic acid okay you can even try this phba tropical applicant immediately after extraction keep a tropical applicant of phba okay so that the chances of dry socket can be prevented and advise the patient to use chlorox in mouthwash and all these things it means the patient should not disturb the process of clotting so that is the basic uh, prevention protocols that you have to make a note. Okay, so oh, I hope you are very clear. I am just going to repeat the things again. So etiology, make a note about etiology. Make a note about the incidence values. The incidence values. Overall it is 2 percent. Mandibular third molar it is 20 percent. 3 to 4 days. Halitosis. A background history of uh, either uh, menstrual cycle or hormones abnormality, foreign body, smoking, lack of irrigation, trauma during the procedure, oral contracepts or advanced ages, advanced ages pay, pay, like patients who are immunocompromised and all these things were included. Make a note about uh, 
make a note about the theories just have a look over the theories theories are mainly concerned with which bacteria which bacteria is mainly concerned with and uh, the treatment things both the prevention as well as the treatment aspects okay so i'm done with today's session so always what we do is uh, we used to rate everything in the life so that we will know the measure of today which can be compared to tomorrow so what your life as a bds student is or with a bds degree is what your life after your mds is what your life after 5 years after mds is this is all comparison you need to compare your life right so similarly i want everyone to compare your preparation review your preparation what your preparation today is what your preparation tomorrow is okay i just want a comparison so please do compare rate your uh, preparation every day so that you will get an analysis like okay i am doing better today when compared with yesterday okay so that is the main thing that you have to focus because now in this lockdown period so many are getting disturbed so much people are getting so much disturbed because they, they uh, the main goal in the lockdown period either you or me or anyone like even even i was suffering a lot early morning you get up or morning you get up and your main goal on that particular day is make this day productive and one once you're going to bed again back you feel okay this is not productive day come on let's make tomorrow productive and people after a period of 7 to 10 days are observing rating themselves they're feeling bad that i'm not up to my expectations but now because this is a regular thing or a concept that is happening with most of my friends who are working in software some x y z but i feel like most of you conquerors you have some task to be completed if you are able to finish the task if you are able to read if you are able to move your book around learn some concepts that is a most productive day trust me trust me most of you most of you are extraordinary you are doing a great job that at least you are doing some productive work not sitting idle at home wasting the time you are doing some productive work learning moving towards your preparation moving towards your goals and success that's really a wonderful achievement that we are doing as a team from past one month and it may extend a two weeks more so i want you guys to use this two weeks in the best way because the day which is lost is lost i can give a simple example because uh, anyway we are going to uh, do this uh, cprs emergencies i think tomorrow or day after tomorrow okay what cpr says is cpr can save person who is already dead means technically dead you can do cpr and you can save the chances of survivability are there means even death at a particular situation can be reversed it reverses back you can do something and you can save the individual but time once lost is not reversible we don't have any time missions right now in this uh, century to reverse the time back so i feel it's not death that is the most expensive thing on the universe it is the time that is most expensive thing on the universe you can see some covid patients after getting infected they are recovering not all but chances of recovery is there even after getting infected by the most dangerous thing right now in the world but can you answer me is the time lost whatever okay you have done 30 days lockdown period time lost can you get the time back or 14 days lockdown period is still there will you get the time back once it is lost so my experience in my life says that time is the most important thing time is the most it's not money it's not money if you if you if you lose money if you lost money again you have to work you have to get and you can get money back if time is lost right now we don't have any factor to get our time back so i want you guys to utilize the time invest the time in the right way to make things possible don't tell reasons i don't have books how many of we are reading in books i have done my mds i have not read any book in my mds trust me i have done all the things from the articles downloads and everything this is what 
life is all your updates i mean is, is there anyone who want to read about covid yes of course everyone want to read about covid 19 is there any book about covid 19 in your shelf or in your library then where you are reading where you are reading you are reading online right so where there is a will there is a way don't tell me a reason that i don't have book i don't have pen i don't have pencil all these are reasons for your failure means you have decided that you are going to be fail you are going to fail and what fail person is going to decide they they find reasons why i am failing okay i will tell this reason so whatever reasons you tell or you are planning you are planning for the reasons for your failure are just a reasons it's not a solution and the only reason why you failed is not you it's not about not having a book or not having a pen or not having a mentor the only reason whether you are successful the only reason is you whether you are a failure the only reason is you. it's always you that is responsible for your success or your for your failure so make a note this is a very valuable statement that i have personally uh, experienced in my life i failed so many times personally professionally you can ask me the reason after lots of analysis i came to a conclusion that i am the reason for my failure okay people call me okay success success now successful the only reason why i am successful maybe is because of me the only is me and maybe tomorrow after tomorrow if i don't work again get relaxed get lazy i may fail again again the only reason for my failure is me it's always you the only reason whether you are successful whether you are failure okay thank you for now uh, i'm signing off uh, dr shrikant from team mds conquer if you have any inquiries you can drop a text message in the comment box related to the subject or related to your preparation or anything yes all the best take care